Hello and welcome everyone, very happy that we are all together again. In this tutorial we will introduce some AutoCAD basic orders as we need to express our design well in the AutoCAD layout. So let's start to learn how to apply those orders. The first order if we need to make a line, so if we need to draw a line in the AutoCAD, easily we type L and enter and then start with a left click and then move with the mouse so when moving with the mouse we can draw the required line then when pressing another lift click so we have drawn our line so this is our line and if we need to continue drawing another line we will move also with the mouse and have another lift click so this is another line and also if we need to draw another line we move with the mouse and move again and move again so all of those are some lines and if we need to end this line process we press enter so if we need to repeat this order again we can press enter and then it asks us to specify the first point so here another left click and move to draw the line and another line and so on so if we need to end again we press an enter here this is about the line order now we can delete those for example so if we need to delete we can select those lines and then press on delete now the second order we have is called the pulley line so we can apply the pulley line order easily by press on p and l so p and l and then enter then it asks us to specify the first point so a lift a click and then move with the same technique of the line order and then move and then move so this is the pulley line and then move and if we need to end the order we press on enter now you can ask what is the difference between the pulley line and the line as here this is a line order and we made it exactly by the same way of the pulley line so let's see the difference between them easily here if i select a part of the line you can see that this part only of the line is selected this is because i typed it or i have drawn it by the line order but on the other hand when i select this one you can see all the line is selected so again when i select this one this one only is selected not the total line and if i select this one for example so i'm selecting now the whole of the line so we can say that the pulley line is producing a continuous line and when you select any part of it you will select the whole of the part and here for the line it draws a discrete line so the line order draw a discrete line but the pulley line draw a continuous line now the next order we have is the ortho mode so what's the ortho mode here when I need to draw a line I press L and enter and then I specify the first point so you can see that the line is moving with your mouse at any direction so it moves at any degree of the 360 but on the other hand we have this tab here which is the ortho mode so when you press on the ortho mode and when I press L again to type a line so press L and enter you only are able to move at the perpendicular direction so the ortho mode enables you only to draw a vertical line or a horizontal line like this one this one here this one and this one and it doesn't enable you to draw a line in any direction or any other direction so when we deactivate the ortho mode we can type l and enter and then we are moving at any direction but at the ortho mode we are moving only vertically and horizontally that's good now there are some popular shapes that we need to draw like the circle, the rectangle, the triangle. So to draw a circle easily we press C and enter and then it asks you to specify the center of the circle. So when we press a left click and then we are moving so you can see that this is the circle and this is its radius. When I move with the mouse its radius decreases or increase. So when I press another left click here I draw the circle and also if you need to draw a rectangle it's very easily you type a comment R E and C so by R E and C you are drawing a rectangle and then press enter here it asks you to specify the first corner of the rectangle I specify this first corner and when I move you can see this is your rectangle here when I press another left click I have made the rectangle that's great 
The next note we have in the AutoCAD is the selecting options. As the AutoCAD has two selecting options. The first one, when I press a left click and then I drag from the right to the left. So when I drag from the right to the left, you can see that the selecting color is this green. But on the other hand, when I press a left click, then I drag from the left to the right. So the dragging from the left to the right come up with the blue select. So we need to see the difference between the blue select and the green select. Easily we can see that. When I'm making a green select, you can see when I select only a part of the object, the whole part is selected. But when I'm making the blue select, so when I select the part of the object, not all the part is selected or the part is actually doesn't select. So to select the object with the blue select mode, you need to include the whole of the object. As you see here, the rectangle is selected. When I selected the whole of it or when I included all of it and the blue select. While on the other hand, when I select only a part of the object, and the green select, it's all selected. So this is the difference between both of them. Now the next order we need is to cancel the order. For example, when I press an L and enter, so I need to type a line now, but what about if I need to cancel this order? So if you need to cancel the order, you easily press on the escape button in your keyboard, and the escape order in your keyboard is the left upper corner button. So the left upper corner is the skip button when I press on it and cancel any order. Here when I press a rectangle and press enter then I am select the rectangle. But now I have changed this idea. I don't need to draw a rectangle so I press on the skip button here I cancel it. So this is for canceling any order you are working on. Also another popular geometric shape is the arc. So if you need to draw an arc, you easily press on A and enter. So when you press on A and enter, it asks you to specify the first point of the arc. So I type this point. Then it asks you to specify the second point. I can select the second point and it asks you to specify the third point. So you can see I can draw this arc, I can draw it to be like this one, like this one. So when I press on this one here, this is our arc. Here again, when I press A and enter, the first point, then the second point of the arc, and then the third point, and that's it. Now let's delete those garbage. That's great. The next order we have is the mirror order. And the mirror order, if you need to mirror any object, or if you need to copy it, but to appear on the other side, like the appearance in the mirror. So to do so, you easily press on M and I and then enter. So M and I is the short for the mirror order, press enter. Here it asks us to select the object that we need to mirror. I select this object and then I press enter. Then it asks us for the first mirror point as the mirror will be done according to the line that you need to mirror across it. So I can specify this first point for example and here according to the second point the mirror will be done. So when I made a vertical point let's activate the ortho mode and you can see if I made it to be a horizontal one, the mirror will be done at this line. And if I made it to be a vertical line, the mirror will be done at this way to be vertically. Here when I press a second click, you can see it asks us if we need to erase the source object. So it asks us if we need to erase this first object. I can press no or I can press yes, but for this I press no and then enter. So it has been mirrored. Here this rectangle has been mirrored. Now let's do that again, but deactivate the ortho mode. And then to repeat the last order, you can press on enter directly. So I can press on enter directly, or I can type the short of the order. And for that I'll press on enter. Here it asks us to select the object. I select this rectangle and press enter. It asks us to specify the first point of the mirror. I select this point and this point and it asks us if we need to erase the source object so i press on yes now and press enter so the object has been mirrored and the source object has been erased that's good
Now what about if we need to move an object? For example, I need to move this arc and to move an object we easily can select it and press on M and enter. So when I press M, M is the short of the move order. I press on M and enter. It asks us to specify the pace point. So the pace point is the point that we will pick the object from it. Here I'll pick the object, for example, from this point. You can see that it moves with you. And I can paste it at any location I need. Here I paste it there. And that's it. Now the first order we have is called the hatch. But what about the hatch? The hatch is an order that enables you to fill any object or to fill any closed object with any style of drawing you need. So if I need to fill an object with some dashed lines, we can do that. If I need to fill an object with a solid color, we can do that and so on. And to activate the hatch order, we press on H and enter. Then it asks us to pick an internal point, so the hatch is done for only the closed objects. And for this it asks us to pick an internal point from the object. And for this I need to hatch the internal side of this rectangle. I press at any point inside it. But at first, those are some options related to the hatch order. Here when I press on it, those are some styles that you can select one of them. Here I can select this one. And you can see this is a style and also we have for example this is style so those are some dashed lines and you can see also we can select the solid mode so when you select the solid mode whole the solid will be filled with the color and also we have for example this mode and we can select another one like this one here and so on so for us we can select this one here and press on enter so this is about the hatch mode and to close the hatch we will press on close hatch creation or we will press on escape so we will press on escape now that's great here we have hatched this rectangle all right now the next order we have is the trim order so for example if we need to trim a line how can we do that and to do that easily, we can type here line, L and enter, specify the first point, that's one, and press enter, then press enter again to activate the order. So to end the order or to activate it again, we press on enter. Here enter and specify the first point and the first point and enter. So suppose that this part of the line here on the down is an extension one or we don't need it. So if we don't to trim this part of the line, Easily we type T and R, then press enter. Here it asks us the object we need to trim. So we select the first object we need to trim. Then it asks us to select the second object. As the trim order is done by selecting two objects, the first one and the second one. And for this we will select the second object and then we press on enter. Then it asks us for the part we need to trim. I select this part. So that's easily, it has trimmed this part. Now I press enter again to end the order. And also I can press enter again to activate the trim order again. And here it asks us to select the object. So not to select each object individually by selecting here by a left click, we can drag to select the whole objects that we need to trim a part of it. So I'll select those objects and then I press enter. So it asks us for the part we need to trim and easily I can trim this small part here. That's great, we have trimmed it. And press enter to cancel the line, that's great. Also we have an order which is to copy. So a very popular order is to copy an object that you have in your AutoCAD drawing. And to copy an object you easily need to select it and then press C, O and enter. So it asks us to specify the point that we need to pick the object from it. So we select this object as we will pick this object from this point and then it's moving with us now. When I press a left click I'm pasting it, so I have pasted it here, and it's still moving with us now. So we can paste it many times we need. I paste it here and here and here and another lefty click and another lefty click. And when I press escape or enter, I'll end the order. 
so this is to copy any object easily. And finally, the final order we have for this tutorial is to explode an object. So what is pal the explode here? Let's delete this one. Here we select it and delete it. So you can see when we select this rectangle, it's selected as a whole part. So when I select it with the green select, you can see it's selected as one block or as a whole block, which means that those four lines that represent the rectangle are plugged to each other or they are consisting only one block. But when I need to explode this rectangle, so I need to make this line a separate line that is separate from this one and separate from this one. And for this, we will press on X and enter. So the explode mode is X and enter. And it asks us to select the object that we need to explode. I can select this rectangle and it asks us to select any other object if we need. So I don't need any other object. And for this, I'll press on enter and that's it. Here to check that we have exploded this rectangle when I select it. So that's great. I select only this line. And when I select this line, so I selected only this line, not the whole rectangle as what was done previously. So I can move this line now when I press M and enter and I move it from this part. So it has been separated exactly from the rectangle. But for this rectangle, for example, it's one plug. So when I select it, I select it as one object. And if I need to move it, I will move the whole rectangle. This is because it's one plug. And by this way, we can explode any object that we need. So that was about some important orders related to the AutoCAD design that will help us very greatly. So basically right now, thank you for watching and see you next tutorials. Hello and welcome everyone, very happy that we're all together again. In the previous tutorial we have discussed some very essential and important AutoCAD orders and on this tutorial we will continue those orders. So the first order now is that what about if we need to measure the area of any object? So for measuring the area let's firstly draw a rectangle, here rectangle and press enter and specify the first point and the next point and that's it. Here for measuring the area, we press the command area. So the common area will enable us to measure the area and press enter. Then it asks us to specify the first corner. We specify the first corner and it asks us to specify the second point. So I can specify the second point and it asks us to specify a third point. So at this point I can end or I can continue. So I can continue to any infinite number of points that I need for the area that I need to measure. But for example, when I press on enter, as for example, I need to measure the half of this rectangle. So I press on enter to end the order. And here it appears that the area is 3.7 meters square. Also, when I try to measure the full area of this rectangle, here I press enter again as it will activate the last order and I specify the first point, the second point, the third point and here the fourth point and I press enter now. So the full area of the rectangle is 7.5 meters square which is actually the double of the previous area. That's good. Here I press on escape. And now the next order is to measure the length of any object. So I need to measure the length now. And for this, we press on MEA and then S. So when we press on MEA and S, it appears here the measure. So I can choose this one. And it asks us if we need to measure a distance or a radius or an angle or an area. So this is a global order. And here I press on distance. Here it asks us to specify the first point and then the second point. So as you see, when I'm moving, the length is increasing with us. Here the number is increasing and I can press on this point. And that's it. It tells us that the distance is 4.7 meter. Also, we can press on enter again and it asks us to specify the first point here, the first point, and it asks us to specify the second point. So this is the second point and that's it. Here it tells us that the distance is 4.3 meter. That's great. Also, we can do the same thing, but with another way by pressing easily on linear here. 
and it asks us to specify the first point, then the second point, and that's it. Here it tells us that the lens is 4.3 meter, and when I press a left click, I can fix the length here, so this linear option, if we need to express the length on the drawing, or if we need to express it as a part of the drawing. Here, this is a part of the drawing, and we can select it, and delete it, so that's it. Those are two ways for measuring the distance. Now what about if we need to change the style or the color or the width of the lines that you are using. Here this is done easily by selecting this tab and choose any color you need. Here I can change the yellow and when I press on L and enter, so I specify the second point that's gray. The color has changed it to P yellow, so that's for the line color. Also if I need to change the line width, I press on this part here and I can select any width I need. Here let's select this 0.2 meter and when I press enter again to type a line. So from this point to this point to this point and that's it. So this is the width of this line. I can select another one and I can increase it to P 0.5 millimeter for example and press enter and select this one and this one and this line that's a great. Here the line widths have been increased greatly. Now let's decrease it back to P for example 0.25. Also to select the style of the line, we can press on this mode here and it asks us if we need the line to be a continuous or we need it to be dashed like this one or we need any other. So we can select this line style for example and ln enter and specify the first point and the second point and that's it here. This is another style and you can change now let's delete those lines here and those ones and also we can delete this one that's great the next order we have now is the array order so what's about the array order here if you need to make an array of any number of objects you can easily type a r and then enter and here it asks you to select the object that you need to make an array of at. I select this rectangle here and it asks us if we need any other object. I press enter so I don't need. Here it asks us if we need the array type to be a rectangular one or a path one or a polar one. So I press on rectangle and that's it. This is an array of rectangles and here those options are the related options to it. So it asks us for the number of columns that we need for that array, it's 4, I can change it to P3 for example, and you can notice now the difference. Here I have decreased the column from 4 to P3, and I can make it for example to P10. So it has increased to P10 columns, here we have 10 columns, and for the rows it's 3 here, so we have 3 rows, this one and this one and this one, I can change them to P for example 5 and press enter. So this is about the array mode, and those also are some other options. It asks us for the distance between each two objects, or each two rectangles, here we can make it for example to P6 and press enter. So the offset distance has been increased and also if we need to increase the width between them here at 6 so I can change it to P12 and enter. Here we have increased the offset between them and that's it. Now we can close the array option. Now the next order we have if you need to refresh your program. So sometimes your program works heavily and you need to refresh it. And for this our order now is called the region rate. And to activate the region rate order we press R, E and G. And then select the second one not the first one. And then press enter. So by selecting the region rate order, we are refreshing our program and we are decrease the size file as there may be an increase in the size of the file and this may your file more heavier and the operation. Now we need to delete those ones, but you can see when I select them, the, all of them are selected as one object. And this is because they are supposed to be one group or one object. And as we learned before, if we need to explode a grouped object, we can press on X and enter. So we have exploded them, now I can select those only and I can delete them and that's it. 
Now what about if I need to do the inverse of the previous operation which is to group an object. So we have learned how to explode an object and now we need to learn how to group an object. This is easily done by selecting the object and then press G and enter and that's it. When I select any one of them, the whole of them are selected as the whole of them are made to P1 group. Here I can explode them again, X and enter. So when I select any part of them, it's selected separately. So this line is selected separately and so on. Now the next very important order that we need very very much in our design is to pluck an object. So to pluck an object, it looks like the group operation, but it have some other facilities or some extensions and the facilities. And for this I select the object and I press on P and enter. So it asks us for the pluck name. Here I can rename it to P rectangle 1, so rect 1 and I press enter. So when I press on this object here, it seems that it has converted to a pluck. So the pluck has some special facilities. That is, for example, I can't edit it. So I can't edit its color, for example, its width, its length, its scale. Here when I select it and I need to change its color to pea green, for example. So it hasn't been selected. This is because the plucked object is supposed to be a frozen object that is can't edit it by the normal operations and for this I'll select it again and to edit it I'll have a double click on it so it asks us if we need to access the rectangle one I'll press on OK so the program will lead us to another window like this one and this is a special window for the plug at which we can edit anything or any property related to our object here I can select it and I can go to the home mode and I can change its color to pig green for example and I can close the plug editor it asks us if we need to save it changes I'll press yes I need to save it changes that's it here we have changed the plug so if you need to change any property of the plug you need to access it separately and you can't edit it at the global window of all of the objects in your AutoCAD design now a very important order we have also is the scale order. So the scale order enables you to scale any object you need. So you can increase its scale or decrease its scale. And it's done easily by selecting the object and then press S, C and enter. It asks you to specify the pace point that you need to start the scaling operation from it. I'll press on this point for example. Then here you see I'm increasing the object or I decreasing it. So by the scale point I can decrease or increase the object scale. Also if you need to do this operation very sharply, you can enter the scale value in this part. So when I enter the scale value to P5 for example and press enter, so the object or this rectangle has been increased or it has been maximized to a scale of 5 times its original scale and that's it. Also we have another order which is called the fillet and to know what's the fillet order we need firstly to draw a line L and enter so that's one good and also we need to draw another line L and enter and here that's it. Now the fillet order enables you to make a fillet for any angle you need so for this corner we can make a fillet by press on F and enter so it asks you to select the object that you need to fill it. I'll select this object and it asks us for the second object. I'll select this object and that's it. But you can't see the fillet here as the fillet radius is very small and to increase the fillet radius I'll press on F again and enter. Here it asks us if we need to select object or another thing so I'll press on the down arrow and I'll choose here you can choose undo polyline and radius so we will choose the radius of the fillet and press enter. Here it asks us to enter the fillet radius I'll press on 0.2 and press enter select the object this one this one that's good here when we made the fillet radius to be 0.2 you can see that the fillet has been appeared as the fillet radius on the previous one was a very small value so it didn't appear on the previous time 
And finally, the final order we have is to rotate an object. And to rotate an object, we easily select it, like this one here, and press R and O, and then enter. So it asks us to specify the point that we need to make the scaling operation around it. I'll select this point, and then you can rotate the object at any degree that you need. So this is to rotate an object at any degree that you need. I can activate the ortho mode if I need to rotate it to be vertically or horizontally rotated. And that's it. So that was about some very important AutoCAD orders. Hope that's clear right now. Thank you for watching and see you next tutorials. Hello and welcome everyone. Very happy that we are all together again. In this tutorial, we will continue exploring the different comments on the CAD software which will help us to make the required electrical designs on the CAD software. So let's start. Now the next important command in the CAD software is called the layer order. And the layer order or the layer command is a very important one in the CAD designs. As we use the layer command or we use this layer tab here for organizing the design we have. And this organization process is done by making each group of shapes which have the same function to be on a separate layer which we can control separately. For example, we can add all the doors we have in the drawing on a separate layer. As you see, if I select any door of the doors of this drawing, here if I select this door, you can see it appears on the doors layer. And also by the same way, if I select any text in the drawing, for example, I select this text, you can see it appears on a different layer which is called the text layer. So each group of objects which has the same category, we can add add to P on a separate layer. Here, if I select, for example, this part which is a furniture on the drawing, if I select this part of the furniture, you can see it appears on the furniture layer. And also, if I select this chair, for example, it appears to be on the same furniture layer. And we can check another thing. So if I select this wall, for example, so we will find that it appears on the walls layer. So we can say that for organizing our drawing, we can set each group of objects that have the same description or the same kind, we can set it on a separate layer. And this is to control each group of objects easily, as we can change each layer color from this tab. So if I select the furniture layer, I can change its color, for example, to be any color we need. And it will be only by one click, as all the changes will be applied to all objects we have on the same layer. So we control all the parts or all of the shapes which have the same description or which corresponds to the same category, we can control all of them by only one click by changing the options or the properties of its layers. And this is not to select each part of the furniture, for example, and change the color of each one manually. So the layer option make it easy to control the group we have by only one click. And here if we explore the layer tab, we will find that we have many layers, so we generate each layer we need. And if we focus on this furniture layer for example, we will find that it has three options. This lamp option here, which is called the turn off or turn on the layer. And this second option, which has the sun shape. So the sun icon is called the freeze or to freeze the layer. And finally, we have this lock shape to lock or to unlock the layer we have. So for all of the layers, we have those three options, the turn on or turn off, and this one which is to freeze the layer, and this third one which is to lock or to unlock the layer. And now we need to know what is the function of each one of those three options. Here the first one which has the lamp shape is to turn on or turn off. And by turning the layer off, we will hide all the layer we have or we will hide all the shapes that lays under this layer we have. So it will be invisible one. For example, if I turn off the furniture layer, you can see it asks us if we need to turn off the layer. I'll press on yes. 
And here all of the objects we have on this layer has been hidden or it's invisible now. So you can see we have hidden all the furniture we have on this layer. This is because we have turned off the furniture layer. And we can return it back again by pressing on turn on. So by turning on the layer appear or all of the objects in this layer or on this furniture layer appears. And I can turn it off again and press yes. So all of the furniture has disappeared. I can turn it on again and so on. So we say that the first command we have is to turn on or turn off the layer and by that way we made all the objects on the layer to be hidden. Very good. Now the second option we have is the freeze option which has this sun shape or this sun icon and this freeze option is used also for turning the layer on or off to make it a visible one or a non-visible one. For example, I can select the text layer, so I press on T, here we have the text layer. We can press on this freeze to freeze the layer, and by that way you can see all the text we have has been hidden, or it's invisible now as we have frozen it. So if I press on freeze, you can see all the text appears. And I can press freeze again to hide all the text. I can unfreeze to appear. So I can hide it or show it as what I need. But you can ask now. What is the difference between the freeze option and the turn off option? As both of them will make the layer to be an invisible one. So both of them will turn the layer on and off. Hence we need to know how those two options differs from each other. Here we say that the turn off option will hide the layer, but it will make it available in the memory to edit it or to change it. For example, if I turn it off the text layer, here I turn it off. Now I can make some changes on the text layer, although it's turned it off or it's an invisible one. So I can access the text layer and press on turn off. And then I can press on T and enter to write the text. Now I can specify the text area to P this one for example. Now I can type distribution. Then I press on escape and save changes. And that's it. You can see we can find the text here. This is because we have turned off the layer text, but we can make some changes to it or we can add a text to it or we can delete a text from it. So turning off the layer make it available to make some changes to it. And here if I turn it on the layer again, if I turn it on the text layer, you can see exactly the text which we have typed exactly appears here. This is because although we have turned it off the layer, but we can make some changes to it or we can modify it. So by that way, turning off the layer make the layer to be an invisible one but it's available on the memory to edit it. But on the other hand, the freeze option makes the layer to P unavailable on the memory and at the same time it's invisible. So we cannot edit the layer while it's frozen. For example, if I go to the furniture layer for example, here I can freeze the furniture layer and here as you see all the furniture has been hidden or it's unavailable but if I need to access the furniture layer I cannot access it so if I type F and if I need to go to the furniture layer here it tells us that the selected layer cannot be made to be the current layer this is because it's not available on the memory now as we has frozen it so we cannot access the frozen layer while it's frozen and we cannot make some modifications on it so if I press on close and now I go to the furniture layer again, I press F and then make it to P unfrozen one. Here it appears. Now if I need to access the furniture layer by pressing a lift click, exactly. Here we can access the furniture layer as it's unfrozen now. Very good. So that's about the difference between the turn off option which enables hiding the layer while I can edit it. But on the other hand the freeze option hide all the objects and at the same time it doesn't enable us to edit the layer anyway.
Now the final option we have on the layers is the look option. So this is the third option we have which has this look shape which is the look option. And this look option makes the layer to be a visible one. But we cannot make any changes on the objects which exist on this layer. So it will appear but we cannot handle it. For example if I look the furniture layer. You can see the layer appears or the objects on the layer appears but it appears on a pale shape or on a pale color. And if I need to select any part of it and make any operation to it. So if I need to select this part for example here I have selected it but if I need to delete it here I cannot delete it. And if we go to all the parts which layers on this furniture layer, you can see we cannot edit it or we cannot handle it. So it appears, but it's a locked one. So it appears on a pale shape and we cannot handle it or we cannot edit it. Here I can select this object for example. And if I need to scale it by pressing on SC and enter. So it asks us to select the object. I can select this object. Here if I need to select this object I can select it. This is because it's a locked object or its layer is locked. Here it says that we have a locked layer. Very good. So that's about the lock mode on the layer which make the layer to be a visible one. But we cannot apply any operation on this layer. Here I can go to the furniture layer again and unlock it. So if I unlock the layer, it returns back to its original state. I can select any object and I can delete it for example and so on. More than great. So this about this tutorial at which we introduced the layers on the AutoCAD. And on the next tutorial we will start on the handling process of the hospital layout. So we can prepare it for the required lighting design on the CAD software. Hope that's it clear right now. Thank you for watching and see you next tutorials. Hello and welcome everyone. We're happy that we're all together again. In this tutorial we will start on the first step of the lighting design on the AutoCAD software. As the lighting design passes through some different steps. Firstly we can make the manual calculations manually or using the Dialux design. Then the next step is to make the wiring diagram of the lighting design as we learned it before by distributing the luminaires we have on some circuits and each circuit has some luminaires connected to it. And we learned it before on the previous tutorial how to design the different parameters of each circuit like the cross-sectional area of the wires and selecting the rated current of the circuit breaker. And now we need to design the lighting system wiring design on the CAD software. So let's start. If you remember this is the hospital layout which we designed the lighting system for it for some of its room before. And we made this design on the Dialog software. But now to start making the lighting design on the AutoCAD software. The first step we need to do is to prepare the layout to be ready for the lighting design. And the preparation process or the handling process of the layout is made through some different steps. Firstly we need to turn off all the layers that we don't need in our design. And this is to make the design a more simpler one. As we need to express only the lighting design. So we don't need to express many details in the architectural layout. But we need to express the lighting design only. So we will hide all of the unnecessary details in the drawing. And the first unnecessary detail on the drawing is the text here. So we have a layer for the different text on the drawing. This text for example this one for this room and this one and this one. So all of the rooms have some text to express its name or to express its details. But we don't need those texts or we don't need this text layer in the lighting design. Hence we will hide it. And for that we will go to the layers tab. We turn it on. And we press T to search for the text layer. Here this is the text layer. We can turn it off. That's it. You can see. The drawing now is much simpler. As we have hidden all the text in the drawing. 
Also, you can see we have some lines here on the drawing, like those lines and those lines and those lines, for example. So we need to hide them. This is because those lines are some architectural helping lines that the architect using for helping to construct the architectural layout. So we don't need to express those architectural lines and for that we will hide them also. So if I select one of them for example, you can see this is their layer. So I can turn out their layer, here I turn it off. That's it, you can see those lines has been hidden and also we don't need those lines so I select this one and I can drag the layer tab down and I turn it off also. Very good, you can see the drawing now is much simpler as we have hidden the architectural lines which we don't need. And by the same way we need to hide the furniture and the drawing as the furniture makes the design to be a crowded one. So if we inserted the lumineers and the drawing while the furniture exists and the drawing also there will be a clash between the lumineers and the furniture so the lumineers will not appear in the right way or the lumineers will not appear on the clear way. For example we may have a lumineer on that position so we cannot distinguish between the furniture and the lumineer and for that reason we need our rooms to be more clear and by that way we will hide all the furniture we have in the drawing so we select any one of them like that one or we select this one for example and here you can see the lay on the furniture layer so we drag this tab down and we turn off also the furniture layer by that way here it asks us if we need to turn off exactly the furniture layer here we press turn off that's good, you can see the rooms are more clear now or the room seems to be more clearer now. So at that condition when we insert the lumineers on the rooms it will not be shuffled with the furniture. Hence we will have a more better design. Alright, after that the next step of the handling operation is to change the color of the drawing. This is because we need all the architectural layout to have the same color which is a dark one or which is a pale color and this is for the lighting design to be a clear one as we will insert the lumineer with a bright color so if we unify all the colors on the architectural layout to be a dark one and we set the lighting design on a bright color or on a clear color at that case the lighting design will be expressed very clearly as a result of the difference between the dark and the light colors and to do so we can select all the architectural layout we have and we can make its color to be a gray one. So what we will do now is to select all the drawing we have. Here we can select the drawing and then we press a right click and then press on properties. Now we will go to the color tab. Here we select the color and drag this tab down and now we will press on select color. So we need all the drawing to have a dark color or a pale color. So we can select this gray for example. Here this gray have the color code to P235. And that's it. This is a good one. Then we press OK. Very good. Now we can close this properties tab. And as you see this is our drawing. Most of the lines has been changed to P gray. So it will be a good one for our lighting design. But you can notice now we have some objects on the drawing that their color hasn't been changed like the doors here or like those objects and this is because those objects are designed on some blocks. So if any object is designed on a block we can edit it from outside here but we need to access its block and change it from its block. So we can select this door for example and then we press a double click on it. And here you can see it lays on a plug called P, so we can access it by pressing OK. And then we can change its color by selecting it. And then we go to the Home tab. And now we can change it to P this color which we have changed it for all of the drawing to P the gray color. And that's it. Now we press on Close Block Editor and press Save. Very good, you can see we have changed some doors. Now we have some other doors also that hasn't been changed. This is because those doors may lay on another plug. So if I select this door and press double click 
and then press OK to access its layer or to access its subluck. Now I can select it and go to the Home tab and change its color to be the gray one. And that's it. Now I press on Close Block Editor and then save the changes. Very good. Now you can see here we have changed all of the colors on all of the drawing we have to be a gray one. And at that moment, our drawing is ready for the next step, which is to insert the lighting luminaires on it. Hope well, that's clear right now. Thank you for watching and see you next tutorials. Hello and welcome everyone. Very happy that we are all together again. In the previous tutorial, we have finished the handling process of the hospital layout we have as a pre-design step for the design to be ready for the lighting design. And now, the first step we need to perform is to insert the luminaires we have designed before. If you remember, we designed the lighting system before for some rooms of this hospital on the Dalek software. So, we need now to export those lighting systems from the Dalek's design to the CAD design. And to do so, we will open the project that we have worked on on the Dalek software. Here, as you see, this is the project which we have designed before. If you remember, we have worked on the lighting design for some rooms like the waiting room, the corridor, the meeting room, the operating room, and the patient room. And now if we need to export those designs as a CAD design, we go to the File tab, so we press on File, and then we press on Export, as we need to export this project, or we need to export the luminaires from this project, but as we need to save it as a CAD layout, so we select this option, which is Save DWG or DXF file. This is, as we learned before, the CAD files have some extensions like the DWG or the DXF, so we need to save this design as a CAD design, Hence, we choose this selection, save DWG or DXF. And then it asks us for the path at which we will save our project or we will save our CAD file. So I'll save it in this extension. And for you, you can save it at any extension which you need, so you can access it later. And after that, it asks us for the rooms that we need to export or for the rooms that we need to export their luminaires. So I'll select all of the rooms, the waiting room, the corridor, here this meeting room, this operating room, and this patient room. So by selecting all of the rooms we have, we can access or the program will save all the luminaires which we have designed on those rooms. And then we will press on OK. And that's it. You can see the program tells us that the export was completed successfully. Now I'll press on OK. And then I'll go now to the path at which I have saved this DWG file. So this is the path at which I have saved the DWG file for the lighting luminaires we have. And this is the saved project. It's saved with a name of project 1. I can open it now by pressing double click on it and then continue and then load very good this is the file which we have i have open it but you can see it's a blank file or we cannot see where are the luminaires but to see the design we have we can type a command which is the regenerate command so we press r e and g and then select the second option which is the regenerate option this is to regenerate the dimensions or to allocate the design we have and then i press an enter that's it now i can zoom out a little bit and here you can see those are the designs which we have this is the design for the corridor you can see those are the luminaires for the corridor this one and this one this is the luminaire and this one and this one until the last luminaire on the corridor we have and those are the luminaires for the patient room you can see this is the name of the room which is the patient room and those are the spot luminaires, and those are the luminaires on the wall. And also, if we go down a little bit, we can see those are some other luminaires. And they lay on this room, which is the meeting room. And here we have another room, which is the operating room. So those are the received luminaires, which we have used for the operating room. And those are two spots, which we have used also, if you remember.
and when going down we will find we have the final room which is the waiting room and those are two lumineers also which we have used which were fluorescent lumineers or which were some fluorescent lumineers very good so those are our designs which we have exported from the dialect software now what we need to do is to insert those lumineers on the actual CAD design of the hospital layout so we will copy all of those lumineers from this CAD file and we will paste them on the architectural design of the CAD layout which we have prepared before or which we have prepared on the previous tutorial but as you can see those lumineers which we have exported from the dialog software has some details or have some extra details like those details here which are the distribution of the legs on the different areas of the room so for the corridor this is the distribution value of the legs on its different area it lays here on green and also for this room those are the distribution of the legs and also you can see we have the name of the room and the area of the room and the value of the watt per meter square so we have 9.8 watt per meter square and the average lux also and you can see each room has all of those data like the distribution of the lux the room name and so on but actually we don't need all of those details and the actual design of the hospital layout as we need to express just the lumineers we have and the wiring design and the distribution of those lumineers only so we don't need those extra details and for that purpose i'll delete all of the extra details which we don't need here i select those distribution of the lux and i press on delete and also i select those ones and delete them and here I go there, we don't need those information like the room name. Here I select it and delete it. And then we can go to this room and delete those parts only, we don't need them. And then we go down, we select those parts and delete them. And those ones, here we select those ones and delete them. And also we don't need this number, so I can select it and press a right click and then select similar and also we can go up here we select those ones delete them and this one and delete it and also we go to this room delete those parts and this part very good you can see the design is more cleared now now we select those parts also and delete them and that's it you can see the design is more pretty now and it's more simpler and we are ready now to copy those lumineers and paste it on the actual layout of the hospital and to do so we zoom out a little bit and select all of the objects we have and then press a right click and then clipboard and then copy with base point and this is to copy the layout from a point which is the reference point that we will paste the layout at which so we need the design to be aligned exactly at the architectural layout and for that purpose we press on copy with paste point and for that purpose i can select a point as a paste point which may be this point which is the lower corner of the corridor we have so we will select this point as a paste point that's good now we jump back to the hospital layout here this is the hospital layout and this is the corridor we have and if we zoom out a little bit we will find that this is the paste point which we have selected before so we will press now a right click and then clipboard and then paste as a block and we will select the insertion point or the paste point which is this point exactly very good you can see we managed exactly to insert the different lumineers on the different rooms we have this corridor and this patient room and this one was the meeting room and this is for the operating room and finally we have this room very good now after inserting the cat lumineers we need to work on the wiring design for those lumineers but the important note now is that in the real actual design we don't work on those dialect samples or we don't work on those dialect lumineers so we will not work on this sample of this spot for example or we will not work on this sample of this received lumineer 
but we work on some other samples for each type of lumineers that are more popular in the actual design and we add all of those samples which are the actual samples which we are working on we add them on a legend or some tables that contains the sample which we need on our actual electrical design of the CAD software and for that purpose I have provided for you a CAD file for the electrical lesion that we may use some samples for it for our electrical design on the CAD software. So let's open it and then press continue and continue and that's it. You can see this is the legend. It has some samples for the different electrical parts. For example, a sample for the chandelier and a sample for the surface mount laminier which has the dimensions of 60 times 60 and the sample for another laminier which has the dimensions of 30 times 60 and this is the sample for the wall mounting laminier for example and if we go down we will find that this is the sample for the one way one gang switch and this is the sample for the one way two gang switch and so on so all of those some samples which we can use as a legend for our electrical design and now for our actual design for the hospital layout we need a spot laminier so we will find that this is the sample for the spot we can copy it here we select it and press a right click and then clipboard and copy with paste point and here we can select this point which is the center of the luminaire to be the paste point we can select it to copy with it and that's it now we jump back to our hospital layout here we go to the hospital layout and then we press escape and then we press a right click and then clipboard and then paste as a block and then continue and continue and we can paste our luminaire at this position for example very good so this is the sample of our new luminaire which we will replace those spots with this one but the first important note here is that this luminaire scale is much larger than this luminaire so we need to rescale this luminaire this is for the design to have a suitable scale for its different parts so i'll select this luminaire and press sc and enter this is to scale it and now we specify the space point and now we can make the scale factor to p 0.3 for example and that's it you can see if we selected this luminaire and press c o and enter to copy it and here if we paste it at that position you can see it has a suitable scale now as it's much nearer in its size to the actual size of the actual luminaire which we have exported from the dialog software now we select this luminaire and delete it and now the second step we need to do is to change the color of this luminaire so I can select it and then as it lays on a plug so I can press a double click on it and then press ok and now we can select it and change its color so we go to the home tab and then change its color to pea green for example and then for the hatch or for the inside hatch we can change its color also to pea green very good you can see this is a more pretty color or this color is more bright one now we press on close plug editor and then save very good now at that point the important thing we need to do is that is to create a new layer which will be used for all of the lighting design objects we have so we include all of the parts that are used on the same design tools we add it to the same layer and here to add a new layer we press LA and enter and then we press on this tab which is to have or to create a new layer and now we can make its color to P green for example and then press OK and then for this layer we will rename it to P lighting design and that's it then we press an enter very good here we have created our new layer and then we press and close and now we select this luminaire and we will add it to the new layer which is the lighting layer and then select it very good you can see if we selected this luminaire we have added it to the lighting layer so all of the objects which we will add later we will add it to the lighting layer as we are working now on the lighting design 
very good now what we will do is to replace all of those spots we have with this new spot which we have prepared so i'll select this spot and press c o and enter and select this space point which is the center of this luminaire and then i go to the first one i add it to the same point and then go to the second one and to the third one to this one and also this one until the last one we have so that's for the corridor we will repeat the same thing for this room we add it here and then there and then at that point and at that point and here and there until the last one and then we jump to the third room we have or the last room which has some spot luminaires and this one and that one and that one and that one and then we can press on escape and then we can easily select this luminaire and this second one this third one this fourth one and this fifth one we can press c o and enter and select this point and paste them at that point this is to paste the luminaires easily and at that point and that's it here we can move this luminaire we press c o and enter and we move it from that point to the last luminaire we have and then press escape and we delete this luminaire finally very good here at that point we have added all the spots we have to our design and on the next tutorial we will continue adding the other luminaires which we have which are those recessed luminaires and those fluorescent luminaires we have so that's about this tutorial hope that's the clear right now thank you for watching and see you next tutorials hello and welcome everyone we're happy that we're all together again and this tutorial will continue designing the lighting system on the CAD layout we have if you remember in the previous tutorial we ended with inserting the spot luminaires so we have inserted the spot luminaire for this corridor and for this room here and also we have inserted them for this meeting room and now we will continue to insert the sexy time sexy luminaires from the legion so we will repeat the same job for the sexy time sexy luminaires here we go back to the legion as you see here we are on the legion we can search for the sexy time sexy luminaire we will find that this is its sample which we use so we can select it and press right click and then clipboard and copy with paste point now we can select the center of the luminaire to be the paste point so we will pick the luminaire from this point after that we go back to the hospital layout now we can zoom in a little bit and then press a right click and then clipboard and now we need to paste our luminaire so we can press on paste as a plug and here we can insert it at that position very good now the first thing we need to do is to add this luminaire to the lighting design layer we have as we said before all things that are related to the same group we will add them to the same layer so as we have added the spot luminaires to the lighting design layer here we will add also the sexy time sexy luminaire to the lighting layer so we can select it and then we can drag down the layers and we will search for the lighting design here that's it we select it and that's it very good so if we selected this luminaire we will find that we have added it to the lighting design layer now the next step we need to do is to change the color of this luminaire to be the green color so we will unify our color for the lighting design to be the green color for the luminaires but as we have pasted this luminaire as a plug so we will press a double click on it and then open its plug so we need to change it inside the plug as we have added it as a plug so we select it and then we go to the home tab and then change the color to be the green one and also for the hatchet parts so we select them and now we change their color to be the green one very good now we close the plug editor and then press save that's good 
Now the next job we need to do is to change the scale or to decrease the scale of this luminaire. As you see, this 60 times 60 luminaire has a smaller scale than this one. So to make this luminaire to be suitable for our design, we need to change its scale or we need to decrease its scale. So we can select it and copy it. So press C, O and enter and start from that point. Here we pick it from the middle point and then we can insert it at that position and after that we press on escape and then we select it again and press SC and enter to change its scale and select this point and then we can decrease its scale until it's aligned with the yellow luminaire so that's good we can press a left click that's good you can see we have the two luminaires are aligned to each other which means that we have made the skill of this new luminaire to be the same skill of the old one all right now we are ready to replace all the dialect sample with this 60 times 60 luminaire so we can select it and press c o and enter and start from that point and here we can paste it at that position and then we can paste it at that position also and after that we paste it at that position very good here we press on escape and also we need to replace those two spots so this one and this one here we go to this spot and select it and press c o and enter and start from that point and then we go there here at that position and at that position and after that we press on escape and then we delete this luminaire we don't need it now all right at that point what we need to do is to design the wiring system for this luminaires and this will be by drawing the different circuits that will be connected to the switches inside the room and it will be connected to the distribution panel also but the very important thing here is that here we have two main types of the drawings which we are performing the first one is called the design drawing and the second one is called the shop drawing so we need to know what is the difference between the design drawing and the shop drawing here we say that the design drawing is a simple drawing that has the general description of the diagrams which we need to express or it carries less details of the layout so it hasn't all the details of the actual design that we will perform on the real design of the building and for that reason we draw the design drawing firstly to carry just the idea of the design we need hence we can have a general view of the design and how we need to perform it without going deeply on the extra details of the design or without knowing how all the wires are passing for example through the walls or through the ceiling so that's for the design drawing on the other hand, the shop drawing is a drawing which will be implemented exactly on the real working site. And for that reason, the shop drawing must have all the required details we need to draw. So the shop drawing is performed with all of the wires with its actual paths with all the required lengths exactly as what we perform on the real site. And for that purpose, we will find that the shop drawing to be a more complicated one or it has more extra details, while the design drawing will be a more simpler one or it carries just the general information about the design. So what happens exactly is that we draw the design drawing with the basic idea of the design and then if it's accepted and we agreed on all of the main concept of the design we start on the next step of drawing the shop drawing which is the real actual drawing that the site engineer is working according to on the working site and for us now we will start on designing the design drawing firstly then we will learn how to draw the shop drawing 
But firstly, before anything, what we need to do is to delete the Lumineer sample, which was for the dialects or which we have imported for the dialects. And as we have imported all of those yellow Lumineers of the dialects as one plug, so if we selected any part of them, we will find that all of the drawing or all of the lighting design which we have exported from the design, it's selected by one click. Here we select them and then we press on delete. Very good. So what's remained for us now is only the lesion sample which we will work on them. And this is the benefit of inserting the lumineers or the Dalex lumineer as a plug. So its benefit is that when we select any part of them, all the plug is selected so we can delete it easily by only one click. Alright, now we can delete this lumineer. Here we don't need it. And that's it. Now for the design drawing, the first thing we need to do is to specify the lumineers which will be added to the same circuit. So we need to distribute those lumineers to some groups and each group will be fed from one circuit. And for that we can add all of those lumineers on the corridor on one circuit. So if we count the lumineers on the corridor, we will find them, those are 11 lumineers and each of them is rated about 18 or 14 watts. Hence, the total power of this circuit will be less than 300 volt ampere, which is smaller than 1200 volt ampere. So it will be an accepted design to add all of those 11 lumineers on the corridor and one circuit. So we will add all of them on one circuit. And now we need to draw the conduits that will link between all of those lumineers on one circuit. So we can suppose that we are using a PVC conduit which is moving through the ceiling to carry the lumineers or to carry the wires through the lumineers. And because the PVC conduit is a flexible one, so it takes a curved shape in the ceiling. And for that we will refer to the conduit of the ceiling by a curved shape. And for doing this we will draw an arc so the arc will refer to the conduit we have. Here we press on A and enter and we specify this first point here, this middle point and then the second point of the arc and after that this third point of the arc which is the middle of the second lumineer. Very good, that's for the first arc which represent the conduit we have. After that we need to add a new layer to add this conduit to it and this layer will be called the wiring design. So we press on LA and enter and then we press on this tab to add a new layer and we will rename this layer to PV wiring design. That's it. Then we press on enter and then we close this tab and after that we select this conduit and we can change its layer to P the yellow one and then we will add it to the new layer we have which is the wiring design. Very good. So if we select this conduit, we will find that it has been added to this wiring design layer. Now we can copy this conduit by pressing on C, O and enter. And we will start copying from this point. And then we will paste it to this point. After that, we paste it to this point. And then to this point. And to this one. Then to this one. Here we are adding all of the conduits we have which carries all of the wires for the corridor circuit. And finally, the final one. Very good. You can see here we have added all of those lumineers of the corridor on one circuit which is represented by those arcs here which represents the conduits we have. Now let's move to another circuit. So we will find that those lumineers we have on this patient room, we will find that they are nine lumineers and they are of the spot type and their total power also will be less than 1200 volt ampere. So it's less than 1200 volt ampere greatly. It may be 300 volt ampere or less. Hence we can add all of those nine lumineers on one circuit. And now let's draw their conduits which carries the wires, the line, the neutral and the earth. So we will press again on A and enter to draw the arc. Hence we start from that point and then the second point which may be that one. And after that the third point which will be the center of this lumineer. 
Now we will do the same thing to change the color of this conduit, which will be this yellow color, and we can add it to the wiring layer. So that's it. After that, we will copy this wire or this conduit. So we select it and press C, O, and Enter. And then we start from this middle point and we paste it at that point. This is for all of the wires to be ready or for all of the conduits to be ready. And then this one. And after that, this one. And finally, this one. All right, now what we will do is to link between all of those luminaires or all of those conduits. So we will pee on the wiring layer and we will draw another arc. So we press on A and enter and we start from that point until that point here. All right, now we will change its color also to pee the yellow color and then we can copy it, press C, O and enter and start from that middle point and we will paste it at that point here. Very good. So we have designed a complete circuit here, which is stored from that luminaire, or it can start from that luminaire, and the conduits go there through that way to those luminaires, and finally to the last luminaire, which is that one. So that's about the second circuit we have. Now we can move to this room, which is the meeting room. We will find that this meeting room has 16 luminaires, and the power of each one is about 14 watt. Hence, the total power of those 16 lumineers will be about 360 watt. So there will be no problem to add the total power of those lumineers, which is 360 watt. There is no problem to add them to one circuit, as it's less than 1200 volt ampere. But the problem lays in the number, as we said before, it's not recommended to add more than 10 lumineers on one circuit, this is to avoid the larger voltage drop. But here, the practical point of view says that, in that case, there will be no problem to add those 16 lumineers on the same circuit, this is because their total power is much less than 1200 volt ampere, and this means that the lumineers will consume a smaller rated current and as a result of the smaller current the total voltage drop will be small as the voltage drop equals the current times the resistance so if the total power is smaller the rated current will be small and as a result the voltage drop will be small so we can add all of those lumineers now with no problem to the same circuit so let's try doing so. Here we press on A and enter to draw the conduits. We start from that point and make this point to be the second one and make this third point to be the third one. Then we can change its color to be the red one. Then we copy it by pressing C, O and enter. And we start from that point. We paste it here and then there and here and at that point and also at this position and at this position and at this one also at this position and at this position and this one also and this one and finally having this position very good now we need to finish our circuit so we draw another arc we start from that point here to that point and now we can change the color to be the yellow one and we need also to link between this luminaire and this one by a conduit so we press on A and enter and we select the center point then we go there and we end at this point very good now we change its color also to be the yellow one all right, so we have completed our circuit here for this meeting room. Very good, so that's about the meeting room and that's about this tutorial at which we designed the wiring diagram for those three rooms, the corridor, the bedroom or the patient room and the meeting room. And on the next tutorial, we will continue our design. Hope that's clear right now. Thank you for watching and see you next tutorials.
Hello and welcome everyone, we're happy that we're all together again. In this tutorial, we will continue designing the lighting system on the CAD layout we have. Now the last room remaining for us to draw its conduit system or its wiring system is the operating room. So if we focus on this room, you can see this is the room which we have, which is the operating room. Here it has four recessed luminaires, which are this one, this one, and this third one, and this fourth one, and it also has those two spots. And from the data sheet of those recessed luminaires, we will find that their wattage or their power consumed is about 36 watt, and for the spots, the power of each of them is about 14 watt. So if we calculated the total power of those 6 luminaires, it will be less than 500 volt ampere. So it's accepted value to add all of those 6 luminaires in one circuit, as the total power of them is less than 1200 volt ampere. So let's try doing so. Here we can draw an arc by pressing on A and enter. We start from the center of the luminaire and we go until this point. Then the third point will be this one. That's good. Now we can change the color to be the yellow one. And then we can change this one to be yellow. Now we draw another arc by pressing on A and enter. And we start from that point. Then this point. So that's for the second conduit. Now we connect this luminaire to this luminaire. So we press again on enter to activate the arc order. Here from that point, this second point, and this third point, that's good. Now we do the same thing from this luminaire to this spot. So we press on enter to activate the arc order again. From this point, this second point, and this third point. Very good. Now by the same way, from that luminaire and a second point, from that luminaire to the last luminaire we have. Very good. Now we have finished drawing the different conduits for the different circuits we have on the different rooms. And at that point we need to connect each different circuit with its distribution panel. As we learn it, each circuit is connected to its circuit breaker, which lays in the distribution panel, which will feed that circuit. But the important question now is that, where will be the position of the distribution panel that will feed those lighting circuits? Here to decide the position of the distribution panel, we have two cases. The first case, if we have a smaller floor area, which has smaller amount of circuits, at that case we insert the distribution panel at any wall which may lay in the middle of the floor, this is to be in the center of the floor, to be near to all of the circuits in the floor. For example, if the floor is a small one, we can insert the distribution panel at this position for example, so it will be in the middle which near to this operating room and it will be near to this bedrooms or this patient room and it will be near from this meeting room and it also will be near from this corridor. But on the other hand, if we made the position of the distribution panel at the corner of the floor for example, it will be near from some rooms and it will be far from some other rooms. And this will be an undesired case, as the distribution panel will be far from some other circuits, hence we need to go with a larger wire to feed those farther circuits in that case. For example, if we made the distribution panel position at this position for example, or at this wall, you can see it will be near from some rooms and it will be far from the rest of the rooms. So it will be a pad design to make the distribution panel position at only one corner of the floor. But if we installed the distribution panel on a wall that lays on the middle of the floor, it will be near from all of the circuits we have in all of the rooms. So we don't have to go with some longer wires to connect the circuits with the distribution panel. So that's for the first case at which we have a smaller floor area with smaller amount of electrical loads. Now the second case is the case at which we have a larger floor area with larger amount of electrical loads. 
At that case, there will be a room that is used especially for the electrical panels. So in the architectural layout, there is a room that the architect is designed specially to be used as an electrical panel room at which we install all of the required panels. And for the larger buildings, there may be more than one electrical room. So there may be two or three electrical rooms according to the building area and according to the amount of electrical loads that lays on the building. And here in that case for the hospital which we are working on as it has a larger area so there will be a room that is used as an electrical room or a room that has all of the electrical panels that will be connected to the different loads on that floor. And here in that floor if we focus in a little bit we will find that this is the room that is used as an electrical room so we will use this room to insert the distribution panels at which which will connect the power to all of the circuits we have and for that reason for the electrical drawing we will insert the distribution panel at that position but we need to get the sample of the electrical panel and for that purpose we will jump to the legion file which have the electrical panel sample so this is the legion file which we have selected some samples from it if we focus in a little bit we will find that we have this is the sample of the main distribution panel and this is the sample for the sub distribution panel and as the panel which we need will be connected directly to the electrical load so it will not be the main distribution panel but it will be the sub main distribution panel and for that reason we will copy that sample from the legion here we press a right click and then clipboard and then copy with paste point now we can pick this point to p the paste point and then we jump back to the hospital layout now at the hospital layout we press a right click and then clipboard and then we press and paste and here we will paste it at that position now the first thing we need to do is to add this distribution panel to the wiring layer which we have this is as we said all of the electrical parts will be added to one layer this is for the handling operation so we select this distribution panel and we can add it to the wiring layer here this is the wiring design very good so if we selected the distribution panel we will find that it's added to the wiring design layer now you can see the scale of the distribution panel is very large so we need to decrease its scale to be suitable to our design so we select it and then we press on sc and enter this is for the scaling and we can pick the part from this position now we can decrease its scale to p this one for example that's good now we can change its color so we can change its color to pink green for example and also for the hatchet part we press a double click on it and then we change it to p the green one that's good here at that point what we need to do is to give this panel a name as each panel is having a special name which can be used to distinguish between it and the other panels so we can try typing a text under this board here or under this panel here we press on T and enter and we can specify this position for the text we need then we can make the style of the text to be the pulled one and now we need to call the panel firstly by the floor which it lays on as here we suppose we are on the second floor so we can type here SF as an abbreviation of second floor and then we can type a dash then sm as an abbreviation for submain and then dp as an abbreviation for the distribution panel then ldp as an abbreviation of submain dp now we press on escape and then it asks us if we need to save the changes we press on yes very good so this is the name of the distribution panel we have sf which is second floor sm which is submain LDP which is lighting distribution panel so it will be the second floor sub main lighting distribution panel now we can rescale this text so we press on SC and enter and we can decrease its scale to P that one for example very good now we can change its color also to P the green color that's it and we need to add this distribution panel exactly on the wall or it will be aligned on the wall this is because the distribution panels are in a soul on the wall so we press on m and enter and we select it from the middle point 
and we can align it exactly here at this wall very good now we can move also this text we move it at that position and then what we need to do is to add this distribution panel and its text on one block so we can select it and then press on p and enter and now we will make the plug name to p the same name of the distribution panel so it will be second floor lighting dp or lighting distribution panel very good now we press on ok so we have added the distribution panel and its text on one plug. Now what we need to do is to add all the lighting circuits or to connect them to this distribution panel. So we need to connect the lighting circuit for this room to this distribution panel and we need to connect the lighting circuit for this room to this distribution panel and the same thing for this meeting room and the same thing for this corridor. But as we are designing now the design drawing, not the shop drawing, so we will not go with the actual path from the circuit to the panel, but we just draw an arrow from the circuit which is referring to the panel. So we can go to each circuit, then we draw an arrow which refers to the direction of the distribution panel. This is because we need to refer to the distribution panel. Or we need to make an indication that this circuit will be fed from this distribution panel. Here let's try from that circuit, we go to that circuit and then we press on L and enter, we start from that point and then we go to the direction of the submain distribution panel and then we end, now we make an auto and then we press on escape and then we need to mirror this line, so we press on MI and enter and we make the mirror line to P that one until that point here and then we press on enter, very good. Now we made another line, L and enter from that point until that point here, very good. Now we need to hatch this arrow, so we press on H and enter, and then we make the hatch style to be the solid one, then we hatch this part and this part, very good. After that we press on escape, now what we need to do is to type a text that is referring to the distribution panel or this text will refer that this circuit is linked P or it will be connected to this panel. So we draw a text by pressing on T and enter and we specify this area for the text. Then we made the style of the text to P this one. Now we type S1 and then a dash and then SM over LDP. And then we close the text editor. So this text is referring to this circuit. So S1 means that this is the first circuit. And SM is the sub main distribution panel. And LDP is the lighting DP. So this circuit will be fed from this distribution panel. Now we can decrease the scale of this text. So we select it and press on SC and enter. And we specify this point. Then we made the scale to P that one. Very good. So let's about this circuit. Now we will repeat the same thing for the other circuits. So we can copy this auto and this text. Here we select it. And this part also. And then we press on C, O and enter. We start from that point. Now we can go to this circuit. Very good. And then we go to the second circuit. And we go to this third circuit, then we press on escape. And what we will do now is to change the direction of this auto and this text. So we select this one and this one. Then we press on R, O and enter to rotate the object. And we select the space point. Then we can rotate it to the direction of the distribution panel, which is this position. Very good. Now we can rotate this text again, or O and enter, and we can make it to P like that position. Very good. Then we change the text so it will be S2 as this second circuit, or this is the second circuit, not the first circuit. Then we press on escape, and yes, very good. So that's for the second circuit, which is fed from the same lighting distribution panel, which is this lighting distribution panel. Now the same thing for this part, 
Here we select this part or this arrow and then we press on R, O and enter and we start from that point. Then we rotate the arrow to go to the direction of the distribution panel and then we move this text. So we press on M and enter and we make it at that position or we set it at that position. Then we made it to PS3. So it's not the second circuit, but it's the third circuit. And then we press on yes. And finally, we go to the final circuit we have, which is this circuit. We select this arrow and then we press on R, O and enter and we select this space point. Now we go to this direction to refer to the distribution panel position. Also, we move this text. So we press on M and enter and we select this position and we made it at that point. Then we change its name to P S4 as this is the fourth circuit we have. And then we press on escape and yes. So by that way, we have designed the complete four circuits that will be fed from this distribution panel. This is the fourth circuit. This is here. This is the second one. This is the third one. And this is the first circuit. Very good. So that's about this tutorial. Hope that's clear right now. Thank you for watching and see you next tutorials. Hello and welcome everyone. Very happy that we are all together again. In the previous tutorial, we have completed the wiring design for the electrical system for those rooms we have in the hospital layout. And in this tutorial, we will continue this design to finish it. So let's start. What's remaining for us now is to draw the switch system that will control those lumineers on those different rooms. For example, if we go to this patient room, we can find that we can control those nine lumineers of the patient room using a one-way one-gang switch. So there will be one switch that will control them from one place and there will be just one controlling point that will turn those lumineers on or off. And also, if we go to this corridor, we will find that we have those lumineers in this corridor. So we can use a two-way one-gang switch. This is because this corridor is a long one, so we need to control its lumineers by turning them on or off by two different points, which will be at the beginning of the corridor and at the end of the corridor. So we can install, for example, the first way at this position and we can install the second way at this position at this wall. So there will be two ways and one gang only. This is because we have only one gang or one group of lumineers that are connected to the same circuit. Hence, we have only one gang, but we have two ways as we have to control or we have to turn off those lumineers from two different ways at this position and at this second position. So that's for the corridor. Now if we go to this room which is this meeting room we will find that we have 17 lumineers. So we need to control them by using a one way two gang switch as we can control those two rows from one gang and we can control this third row from the other gang. So we will have only one frame or one switch and it will have two gangs, one to control the first gang and the second one to control the second gang or the second group of lumineers. And finally for the last room we have, we will find that this is the room we have which is this operating room and it has totally six switches, those two spots and those four recessed lumineers. So we can use also a one-way two gang switch as we have only one way or one frame that will control all of those lumineers and we will have two gangs. The first gang will control those four lumineers or those four recessed lumineers and the second gang will control those two spots. All right. Now to perform this design, we need to go to the Legion file to copy the samples of the one-way one-gang switch and the one-way two-gang switch and the two-way one-gang switch. So let's jump to the Legion file. 
Here we are at the Legion, and if we zoom in a little bit, we will find that this is the sample of the one way one gang switch, and this is the sample of the one way two gangs switch. You can see it has two tooth, and this one gang has only one tooth, and this is the sample for the one way three gang, and this is the sample for the two ways one gang switch. So this is the two ways one gang switch. And for us now, as we need the one way one gang switch, so we will select it, and also the one way two gangs switch, and finally the two ways one gang switch. So we select them, and then we press a right click, and then we need to copy them. So we go to the clipboard, and then copy with paste point. Now we will select the paste point to P this point, for example. And then after copying them, we will jump back to the hospital layout to paste them there. Here we are at the hospital layout. Now we can paste the switches at that position. So we press a right click and then clipboard and then paste. Now we paste them at this position. Very good. Now the first thing we need to do is to decrease their scale. As you see, the scale of the switch is very large. This is with respect to or related to the design we have. So we can select all of them and then press SC and enter. Now we specify the paste point. Then we can make the scale factor to P, for example, 0.3 and then press enter. Very good, you can see this is a good scale for the switches we have. Also we can change their color, so we can select them and we can make their color to P yellow. Very good. After that what we need to do is to make a new layer which will be the switches layer. So we need to add the switches to a separate layer. And for that we type the command layer LA and enter. And then we press on this tab which is to produce a new layer. Now we made the layer name to be switches, then we press enter, and then we close up this layer tab. After that we select the switches we have, and then we add them to the switches layer. So we press an S, and then go down, that's the switches layer which we have created, we press an add. So we have added now the switches to the switches layer. Very good, now let's select this one way one gang switch. So we will copy it, here we type the command C, O and enter. And we specify its space point to P this point for example. And then we need to insert it to the patient room. So we can insert it here at this position. And then press escape. Now we need to change its direction. So we select it. And then we mirror it, so we press M, I and enter. Then we specify this first point. And then the second point. Very good. Now we press an enter. That's good. You can see this is the mirrored switch. Now we select the first one and delete it. And also we select this part. We don't need it. Then we can select this switch. And then to insert the switch, it's inserted on about a distance of 20 or 30 meter from the beginning of the door edge. So we can measure a distance here from that point. Here we go until 30 centimeter, so that's about 30 centimeter. Very good. You can see this is the 30 centimeter we have. Now we select the switch and we move it, press M and enter, and we specify the space point and we paste it exactly at this position. Very good. Now we select this distance and we delete it. Very good. You can see this is the switch that will control all of those nine lumineers. After that we need to draw an arc starting from the switch to the first luminaire in the circuit we have as this will be an indication that this switch will control those nine lumineers. So we press on A and enter to draw the arc and then we start from that point. Then we make the second point to P this one and finally the third point will P this point. Very good. Also we need to distinguish between this arc and the circuit conduit. So to distinguish between this arc and the circuit conduit we will select this arc and we make its style to be a dashed line. So we make it to be this dashed line for example. Very good. Here this means that this one way one gang switch will control all of those nine lumineers as we have linked this switch to the circuit that has all of those nine lumineers.
Now let's move to the meeting room. As we said before, we will control at pi one way to gang switch. But firstly, we need to select those two samples and we need to measure them. So we press on MI and enter. Then we specify this first point and we specify the second point exactly to P this point and then press enter. Very good. Now we select this one way to gang switch and we press on C, O and enter. Then we specify this point as a paste point. Now we go to this meeting room and we will insert it at this position. Then we press on escape. Now we need to make the distance from the edge of the door until the switch we have to P 30 centimeter. So we press on linear and start from that point until we get the 30 centimeter. Here that's about 30 centimeter. Very good. Now we select this switch and then we press on M and enter. Then we move it until this point. All right. Now we select this distance and we delete it. At that point, what we need to do is to go out of this switch with two dashed line, one from the first gang and the second one from the second gang. And the first one will go to the first group of lumineers and the second one will go to the second group of lumineers. So we press on A and enter and we start from that point and here we go to the second point which will be that one. Then the third point, here it will be this point. So that's for the first gang. Now the second gang will control this group of lumineers. So we go with another arc, A and enter. And we start from that point. And then the second point. And this third point of the arc. Very good. Now we can select those two groups, this arc and this one. Here we select them. And we change their style to P the dashed one. And after that we need to make an indication that this first gang here or this first teeth will control this group and this other group. And also an indication that this gang or this second teeth will control this group. And for that we type two letters. The first letter will be A and we will type the letter A here and we will paste it at this group and also this group and the second letter will be P and we will paste it at this second gang and also we will paste it at all of those lumineers at this gang. So we press on T and enter. Then we specify this position for the text to type it. And we change the style to P the polded one. Then we type A and then close text editor. Now we need to decrease the scale of this letter. So we press on SC and enter and we specify the space point. And let's make it with this scale. Very good. Now we can copy this one. Press C, O and enter. And we can paste it here. Then we can change it to P, P, not A. So we type P and then escape and then yes. Now we can copy this A so we press on C, O and enter and we specify the space point and we can paste it at this position then we paste it at this lumineer and at this second one and at this third one then the fourth one and also at this one and this one and this lumineer until the final lumineer we have. Very good, so that's 4A. Now we can delete this one, press delete. Then we select this one, press C, O and enter. And we specify the space point. Then we make it to P at the second tooth or the second gang of the switch. Then we can paste it at this lumineer also and this one and this one until the final lumineer we have. Very good, then we press on escape. And then we select this one and delete it. So by that way we have produced an indication. And this indication is saying that the first gang of this switch will control this first group. Or this group of lumineers. And the second gang of switch which is gang P will control this second group of lumineers or this one. Alright, now let's move to the third room we have. Which is this operating room. Here it needs also a one way two gang switch. So we will repeat the same job exactly. Here we can select this switch. So we can select it and copy it. Here we press on C, O and enter. 
and we specify this point then we can go there and paste the switch beside the door here that's about 30 centimeter from the door edge and then we press on escape now we go with two arcs one for the first gang and the second one for the second gang so we press on a and enter and we start from this gang here then this second point and this third point and then another arc from the other gang we press on enter again to activate the last order which is the arc order we specify this first point then we specify the second point and we specify this third point very good now we select this arc and this second one and we change their style so we need to change their style to p dashed lines then we copy this letter a to p an indication for the first gang so we press on c o and enter and we specify this point then we specify the first laminar and then the second laminar which is the second spot now for the letter p we select it and we press on c o and enter then we can copy it and paste it at that laminar and at this second receive laminar and at this third one and at this fourth one very good so by that way we have made an indication saying that the first gang of this switch will control only those two spots this first one and this second one and an indication also saying that the second gang of this switch will control those four receive lumineers this first one the second one and this third one and this fourth one all right now let's move to the last place we have which is this corridor but at that way this corridor will be controlled by a two-way one gang switch so we have only one gang which are all of the lumineers in this corridor and this gang will be controlled from two ways the first way is the beginning of the corridor and the second way is the end of the corridor so we can copy this switch here we press c o and enter and we specify this paste point then we go there and here we can paste it at this position and also we go to the end of the corridor and we can paste the second gang at this position very good now we can select it and we need to rotate it or o and enter and we specify the space point now we specify the rotation angle to p 90 degree and press enter after that we go with an arc with this two-way one gang switch so we press on a and enter and we specify this point then this second point and this third point so this is an indication that this switch will control those group of lumineers on the corridor then we specify it and make it to be a dashed line very good now we go to the beginning of the corridor we have and we can select this switch also and rotate it or o and enter and we specify the space point and make the rotation angle to p also 90 degree very good now we make another arc a and enter and we specify this first point the second point and this third one then we select this arc and make it to p a dashed line very good so by that way we have made an indication that those lumineers will be controlled from those two ways and also for those three lumineers we have this one has a one-way two gang switch and this one has also a one-way two gang switch and for this patient room it has a one-way one gang switch more than great so that's about this tutorial at which we have made a complete design for the design drawing of the lighting system for those four rooms hope that's clear right now thank you for watching and see you next tutorials